Okay. So, okay. So, Stark Ryan and I have been working on these now for a little while, and we. I'm just going to say this really quickly. We have a smaller set of equations that we um, have proven also defines the closure of the um, the sh these PR cells, and they're in terms of the um, flag. The flag miners, not just all miners, but the flag miners are the ones where you only use the top subset of rows. Maybe you use the first two rows and then any subset of columns. So any of those that vanish on the whole cell, let's call those indexing them just by now the subsets of columns. Because once you know the size of the column set, you also know which rows are going to be in there. So let's call those column sets T sub W, they'll be the truly vanishing, they'll index the truly vanishing flag miners, and they do define these PR varieties. And so the medium roast order could be defined as V is less than W if and only if the truly vanishings for V are contained in the truly vanishings for W. And the espresso roast could be defined, these relations at least in the espresso roast are defined similarly, as long as the truly vanishings for V are contained in the sometimes vanishing for W and the truly vanishing and not the ones that are never vanishing. Those are, we call them use of W for unvanishing. And this happens, the espresso rows, you get a covering relation if and only if the matrix for V is contained in, this is also not right. Um, it should be that MW is contained in CV closure, not fix that. All right, and then um, we also have an analog of Erismann's criteria. So in terms of that Gale partial order and the initial columns, which is nice, but to run this, you know, it's still a little bit of a problem. You have to check all subsets of size up to K on the numbers from one to N, which can be a lot of data as N gets large. So um, this characterizes the medium roast and we can also use it to characterize the cover, the, not the covering relations, but these generating relations in the espresso roast, which contain more than covering relations. So here's a picture of what these three partial orders look like. The way to read this is the light, um, the skinny edges are the decaf order. When you add the red edges, that becomes the medium roast. And when you add the blue edges, it becomes the espresso roast. But blue edges notice that they can go between two Fubini words that have the same, um, same dimension or same co-dimension. All right, so if you're staring at this, maybe I should have paused here actually instead. What properties does this post head have or not have that would be nice? It does have a unique minimal element, but no unique maximal element, right? That's too bad. Not much I can do about that. But another thing that it has is it's not a lattice, right? It doesn't have the property that there's a unique, a unique um, least upper bound and a unique greatest lower bound. So um, th this is, brings us to, well, neither does Bruja order, right? But um, there is an embedding of Bruja order into a nice lattice and it's in terms of alternating sign matrices. And this is the connection on the journey here. So if you haven't seen alternating sign matrices before, they were invented by Mills, Robbins, Rumsey back in 1983. They were looking at Dodgson condensation for doing determinants. And um, these are K by N matrices where the entries are always from the alphabet zero, one, or minus one. And if you read along any row left to right and you ignore all the zeros, you should see the non-zero entries alternating. It should always start with a one and then it comes a minus one and then a one and then a minus one and so on. And um, if you read up a column, it should also the non-zero entries should start with a one and then alternate as you go up. So that's an alternating side matrix. There's a whole books written on the topic. Lots of beautiful math come up in that. And um, Mills Robbins Rumsey already pointed out that for every alternating side matrix, there's also a corner sum, sum matrix. And this is what you get when you take the matrix and you look down and left and you just add up all the numbers that you see. So first of all, it, you'd have an empty set. So let's pad it on the left and on the bottom with a bunch of zeros. But then in the first column, you have a one, where is that it's look it's like it's the fourth row up. So that's why we have a one sort of in the column sum matrix in the fifth row up. And then in the next, when you add in the next column, what can you do? Well, anytime you have a minus one, it's gotta have a one and a, 
a plus one to its left and a plus one to its right. So these column sum matrices, as you read across a row, they're always gonna be in weakly increasing along the rows and weakly increasing as you go up the columns. And they, they can jump up by at most one and they're gonna jump in some places. But this is a clearly a bijection, you can go back and forth. And um, Lascaux and Schutzenberger pointed out that if you take Bruja order and you ask what's the smallest possible lattice that contains it, that's called the dedicated McNeil completion, that poset is actually the same as the alternating sign matrices, which are permutation matrices are alternating sign matrices too. And then you use the poset on alternating sign matrices where you just do the, use the corner sum matrices and you compare entry by entry. So a corner, an alternating sign matrix is less than another if every entry in its corner sum matrix is less than or equal to the corresponding one in the corner sum matrix. Okay, so Matthias and I, bringing up the work with Matthias Konvalinka, we want to think of these corner sum matrices as really like functions on the chain of k plus one elements, zero up to k plus one, that's what ck is, cross with cn, and you make a function to the natural numbers, zero, one, two, three, and so on, satisfying the rules that f of i comma zero is always gonna be zero. We've padded the, the left-hand column in the bottom with zeros. f of k comma n is always gonna be the minimum of k and n, because that's the way these uh, corner sum matrices work. And if you take ij and it's covered by i prime j prime in the poset on c k cross c n, then you either get the exact same value when you want to come, what is f of i prime j prime? It's either the exact same value as f of i j or it can go up by one. So those simple rules, they actually define the corner sum matrices. Anything that satisfies this, you can back it up and get another alternating sign matrix. And that's kind of similar to rank functions and matrices. So if Bn is the Boolean lattice on subsets of the numbers from one to n ordered by inclusion, then you can think of every matrix giving rise to the function f sub n, m on um, Boolean lattice bk cross bn to so the natural numbers, where these functions are given by f m of um, a subset i comma subset j. It, just let that be the rank of the submatrix of m given by rows i and columns j. Well, then the, the function, such a function f m, it satisfies very similar rules to the corner sums, right? If you add one more row or one more column, you can increase the rank by at most one. All right. And um, this is very similar to in Fubini Bruja order with the medium roast order. We could let F sub W be the maximum rank that any matrix in the cell C sub W takes on when you take a subset of the rows and a subset of the columns. And in this case, let's do it with a chain instead of a subset. Let's just use um, the, the flag version of that where you take the top, top so many rows and a subset, any subset of the columns. Let's call that the max rank function for W. And then those things are like matrices so that if you add one more row or one more column, the max rank function can only go up by at most one. And so related to the work that I was doing with Stark, you could translate this into um, the, the PR variety CV is contained in CW if and only if FB is less than or equal to FW point wise. And um, okay, so if we wanna understand the medium roast order, that's this one, we kind of wanna think about these kinds of functions and the McNeil, the Dedekin McNeil completion on them. And that's where Montius and I came up with the idea of a quilt. We said, okay, well, so sometimes we have chain by cross chain. Sometimes we have Boolean cross Boolean. Sometimes we have chain cross Boolean. Well, why stop there? Why not just take an arbitrary two posets, finite posets, and let's say with a rank function and an absolute minimum, a unique minimal element zero hat and a unique maximal element one hat. And we're gonna define a quilt of type P comma Q to be a map, which is a function from P cross Q as a product of posets, it's another poset, to the natural numbers, and it satisfies the pretty much the same three properties. So along the boundary at the bottom, you have all zeros. The top has to be at most the rank of P or the rank of Q, whichever is smaller. And you have this 
Boolean growth type property that when you step up by a covering relation in P cross Q, the corresponding value of F can either be the same or step up by one. So Boolean meaning you step up by zero or one here. So that's a quilt. We call them quilts of alternating sign matrices because they're the alternating sign matrices are really sitting inside of there now for every pair of maximal chains in P cross Q, they give rise to a corner sum matrix in a very natural way. And so that corner sum matrix corresponds to an alternating sign matrix. And we think that they're the more fundamental objects. So we wanted to call them that way to call it out. And here, for example, uh, this picture in the middle is one way to represent a quilt. What quilt is this? It looks to me like this is C3 cross B2. B, B3, that's B3. You can see that there's a square in there, right? That's B3. And then the way that you read this is what, for a particular entry in the Boolean lattice, what is the value at, at zero, one, and two? So that each of the maximal chains through there corresponds to one of those little jaggy pictures. And then you can figure out which alternating sign matrix it goes with. So um, it's very easy to think about all of the quilts of type P comma Q all as a big set, and they are related to each other by a partial order. So you could say F is less than G if the corresponding entry F X Y is less than or equal to G X Y for every single pair X Y in the product of the posets. So let's let quilts P Q be all of them together as a poset under this partial order. And what Matthias and I proved is this is a distributive lattice. It's got a very nice rank function. You can write down what is it's actually got a unique minimal and unique maximal element. Um, it has a lot of lovely properties, these, this quilt lattice. Here's a picture of the quilt lattice for C2 cross B3. It's getting pretty wild already. Um, and one of the corollaries, of course, is that the medium rose Fubini order sits inside of, um, for WNK, it sits inside quilt CK comma BN. Now it's kind of sits in there sort of sparsely uh, for C2 cross B3. If you look at only the purple or blue colored dots, that would be the medium roast order. Some of these other things that we put on here are where are the matroids in there. And um, so it's sparse. There's a lot more to these posets. It doesn't really make the data a whole lot easier to manage because you added so much, except that you do have some nice properties. For example, the atoms, in any interval in the quilt lattice are in bijection with the sinks of a particularly easy to write down graph. And um, well, computing the size of these things is gonna be a sharp, um, sharp P complete problem. But we were able to give several examples where we get nice enumerative formulas. And the, in the beginning, the um, Alternating sign matrices have one of the most beautiful product formulas. So we were trying to emulate that and see how far we could push it. Um, another nice example is in the case where you take any post set cross with CN, which is the case for the medium roast order. And then we do get nice uh, enumerative properties. We can prove that those kind of counting those kind of quilts is always going to be a polynomial function of N. And we can say what the degree is of these polynomials, that they grow fast. Here's some examples of those polynomials that we're talking about. Um, okay, so the coefficients get pretty out of hand pretty fast, but you know one can write them down. And you write them down in terms of an analog of standard Young Tableau. And we think that those are also worth looking at. So I see I'm out of time. So let me just finish with uh, three open problems, but I think there's a lot more going on here. So uh, the original problem that motivated me in Stark was out of the Palowski roads paper, how do you define the covering relations in both the espresso roast and the medium roast orders? So we don't actually have a complete list of all the ways you can get covering relations. We just have defined the, the decaf order because there are some of the covering relations that we know. And we said, okay, let's think about that as a post head. And then both Stark and Jessica Stryker asked uh, the question at different times, what is the dedicated McNeil completion of the Fubini Bruja orders? And while we have embedded the, the medium roast into this quilt lattice, it's not the dedicated McNeil completion. That's too big. So there is something smaller that we might want to find. Um, and the third problem is what other properties of the alternating sign matrices and their corner sum matrices would generalize to these quilts of type P, P comma Q. 
I should meant to ask on here for you all is what what geometry might go with the quilt lattices and with in particular the study of all of the rank functions that go with quilts of type BK cross BN. Okay, let me quit there, but thanks for listening. This is a picture of me and Matthias at cherry blossom season. Thanks very much to Sarah for a very nice talk. Uh, let's uh, give the speaker a hand.